Hello everyone, I'm Amari and we are playing Scarlet Hollow. This is a horror visual novel. Um, it's very text heavy so don't worry, I'll be reading it all out for you. I thought we would play this because it was on my wish list. someone else recommended it, and it is Halloween season, spooky season. So I will try a baby horror game. I don't know, maybe I won't get so spooked by a visual novel, we'll see. name is oh gosh sorry my microphone's in the way can't see my keyboard I uh, live in the city of oh uh, I used to live in a building called Barrington and I always sounded thought that that sounded kind of oops spooky let's go with Barrington pronouns she her Select two traits. Traits unlock additional paths and dialogue options. Powerful build, tough as nails, the pinnacle of fitness, an imposing presence that commands the room. A mean right hook. I don't think that's very me. Mystical, strange, and unusual. You see the threads of reality in ways others cannot. Hmm. I know I want this. I don't care. <laughs> talk to animals. You can talk to animals. Animals can talk to you. A gift and a curse. Okay, we're gonna pick that, and we can pick one more. Street smart, good at lying, and hard to lie to. Fast talker, you can read people and read the room. No door can hold- no door can hold you. It's kind of useful. Keen eye, observant with a knack for picking up small details. Empathetic. Well, I kinda like that one. Book smart, well read and rational, possesses a wealth- Oh, possess a wealth of esoteric knowledge and know when to use it. A talented researcher. Or hot. Extremely good looking. <laughs> a natural flirt. People just like you probably because you're a good person. Not because I'm hot? Okay. Um, talk to animals. What would make sense? I talk to animals and I... Either keen eye or street smart. Because these two... I mean, actually mystical is kind of cool too. See the threads of reality in ways others cannot. Let's go like full witchy vibes. I talk to animals and I'm mystical. I mean, I feel like this would be more useful. <laughs> Fast talker, read. Being able to read people in the room is really good. Read people and read the room. Good at lying, hard to lie to. No door. You know, I want to go full witchy vibes. Let's go, let's go full witchy vibes and see what happens. Mystical and talk to animals. <laughs> uh, this is probably not going to be very useful, but, you know, we're here. You jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off, and now here you are, awake again, and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops in CD de depot d depots in c sorry that would have felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of Perlane Scarlet. Your cousin's mother and your aunt. Seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Ooh, this is my mystical. But it was also more than just the social pressure of the invitation that pushed you to accept it. Something has been tugging you back to this place your entire life. There is no choice to be made, because you were always going to find your way here. So when your cousin called, you knew what had to be done. And now, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. So anyway, I was saying... Oh. Oh no. He's still here. He's been sitting next to you for, for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. 
You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first, you thought he was just being friendly. But that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff. You know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Yeah, you know, teen stuff. So this girl comes up swinging her purse, yelling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and he said it hurt a lot, so I guess she really was mad and not just playing. But she kept swinging and soon enough she lost her balance and fell in the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh, fished her out, and her phone got soaked so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that. <laughs> and we've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me. Like, for real. And geez, you ever just get so mad you just want to kill someone. Somebody. Okay, this... <laughs> this, this guy's toxic. Um... Um... I don't want to threaten him. I never feel that way. No. I've never wanted to kill anyone. Eh, you're young. You'll get it when somebody tries to break your heart someday. It changes a person. Makes them think they never thought they could. I honestly sh I honestly could have killed that woman. Anyways, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. What the hell is wrong with this dude? What's wrong with you? Your girlfriend is giving birth right now and you're thinking about ditching her to go to have fun in New York? After she tried to break up with you and you threatened to kill her? Hey, now, I never threatened to kill her. Okay, maybe over text, just a little, but fatherhood is scary. Plus, her mom is there, so it's not like she's alone. Her mom doesn't like me much. I know why. So I'd probably just make things super stressful. She'll understand. She's chill. Anyways, where'd you say you were heading? Oh my god, I hate this dude. Y you should die. In this game, you are you die. A dude, mystical. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. My mother fled this place many years ago, but she's gone now. And I can feel it calling me back. Some things can only be put off for so long. The young man anxiously shifts in his seat. For one perceptible moment, it's his turn to feel uncomfortable before he catches himself and heartily laughs. Oh, you must be talking about Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the Holler, as they call it in the mountains. That's the only other stop until this bus turns around. So if you aren't getting off at my stop, you must be headed up that way. Almost nobody ever goes there. I'm usually alone on this bus by now, though. Actually, I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the holler, you see. There's always a job listing or two on the boards around there. I never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are. Thanks. But my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while now that I think about it. I should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing up there. Hope they didn't die. He looks back at his phone, for once focused on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely to meet you. Hope you don't get too bored without me to, around to talk to. Here, I have something for you. The stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. They're boiled peanuts! Got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. <laughs> Tip. <laughs> Sometimes picking a dialogue option establishes new facts about who you are. Um, they're dripping. It's gross. Uh, n no, no thanks. You put your hands up to say no. Plus, he's a, he's a jerk. I don't want anything from this, this guy. 
I'm not really hungry. There's still a good 45 minutes left on your journey, pal. Assume, assuming nothing goes wrong. Best to have them on hand. The young man sets the peanuts down on the empty seat next to him. The juices dribble out through the bottom of the bag and into the upholstery, instantly soaking it in peanut brine. Ah, oh, it's gross. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. You're not my friend. You're disgusting. I hate you. Alright, I, I kind of want to take the peanuts now just in case I'm hungry. And just like that, you're alone. The stranger's peanuts soaking in the seat across from you. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow. End of the line. Almost there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to do voices. The bus finally comes to a stop. It breaks, it's brakes squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. The sign at least reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as road, let alone a bus that drives in on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the door behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you and this place behind. Oh. Who's this? Hey, Mari. You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. Ah. Uh... Give her, give, give her your condolences first. It's the polite thing to do. I'm so sorry for your loss, Tabitha. Yes, great. Thank you. Let's get back to the estate. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked it near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clambering onto the into the dusty relic. I don't know why this text is so difficult for me to read. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha man maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Tip. Dialogue options labeled Explorer can usually be taken without advancing the story. Oh, they can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths. So choose carefully. Oh. Ah. No, this is not an appropriate thing to say. How are you holding up? Fine. Um. Okay. But if that ever changes, I'm here for you, alright? Even after I go home. Sure. Um, uh, so the funeral, it's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. Uh, need any help planning? Yeah, yeah. If you ever need help with errands or scheduling, feel free to ask. I, I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine. I just needed the coffin and somebody to dig a hole. Um, I don't want to say this. This is really weird. Wait, but I'm supposed to be weird. I'm supposed to be mystical. But this just sounds rude. Okay, uh, you know what? We'll remain silent. Or actually, I should bring this up. I can't believe we've never actually met before this. You have your mom to thank for that. Or I had, I guess. You can feel the same careless cruelty in Tabitha's words that your mother would use when she talked about Perlane and the old Scarlets. The wound that tore your family apart runs deep enough that it bled through the generations. You sound like her right now, my mother. She hated the other side of the family so much. We don't have to become our parents. Oh, she did not like that. That is a mean face. She's the one who left. Oh, okay. This is my time to remain silent. 
You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steam, steep mountain road. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's seen better days, its crumbling essence is not lost on you. Someone used to cramp apartments in gray cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty of you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long time ago. A long, long time ago. I need coffee. Oh God. You're hit with a blast of gusty air as you step across the threshold and into the foyer. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive. Each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creak on their hinges and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere, else if you value your limbs, the floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen. And hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. So you- oh, it's- it's beautiful. It is. The estate was a prized jewel of the region for a long time. It's quite a magnificent piece of architecture, even now. Shall we begin our tour? Follow me. You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and do your, do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Look at the cat! As Tabitha speaks, your eyes are drawn to the windows and the overgrown garden outside. Dread and anxiety grip your lungs and you can almost feel the ground beneath you start to slip. This place is a step away from being swallowed up and vanishing forever. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Tip. Some explore options prevent you from taking others. Choose carefully. Okay. I wish this text box was a bit bigger. Let's see if I can... Because scrolling... Ooh. That's not it. Is there anything about a dialogue box? It seems not. Okay. I can feel the weight of the world pulling down the, this place and cleans? No. <clears throat> uh... <laughs> let's, let's do the mystical. I'm a mystical, so... <laughs> I can feel the weight of the world pulling down on this place. <sighs> As if the entire estate is a step away from crumbling to dust. Okay, geez, I get it. You think it's messy. I'll tell Janie to be more thorough this week. But you should know there's only so much anyone can do with a country house this old. It's always going to be a little grimy and warm, unlike your sleek city apartments. If a little dirt bothers you, you're going to have a rough time this week. Um, okay. Oh, uh, um, is there... Oh, no, uh, I love... But a whole week of PB&J? I can't do a whole week of PB&J. Is there somewhere in town to buy food? I might want to eat something other than PB&J this week. Is there somewhere in town we can get groceries? Well, aren't you fancy? 
Yeah, there's a general store. There's also a diner. I usually order my food in bulk online though, so I wouldn't be going with you. Um... Uh, sweet, thanks. Cool, good talk. Um... Alright, what's next? What's next on the tour? Bathroom, follow me. Great, it's been hours since I've gone. <laughs> As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Ah, oh, it's time! Approach the cat. Don't try to pet Fru Fru. She, if she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Ah, oh, is a French cat? Ne me parle pas. Uh, oh. Um, okay. Sorry, I don't speak French. I'm sorry, little lady. Je ne parle pas français. Of course, how typically American. I shall debase myself by speaking your tongue, but only so that I might insult you directly to your face, you uncultured swine. <laughs> Haha, ha, very funny. Her name sounds French. Stop wasting my time and let's finish the tour. <laughs> Bet the cat can't even speak French. You once again follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights, it'll get easier to navigate these spaces. But for the time being, you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. Guest bathroom. Not much to show, it's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must, if you must. Yikes. It is a wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and a um, mystery stains the paint. Mystery stains paint the floor. Sorry, I'm so distracted by, like, the crack here and the toilet rolls there. Oh, God. Um. Uh. I don't want to say anything that's rude. I will just lift the toilet seat. Wow! Uh, the bugs. I can hear what they're saying. Scram, fellas. The jig is up. Bugs skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. Um. You know, I need to pee. Yeah, I've been on this bus for like, what, 20 something hours I've been traveling. Use the facilities. A toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour. Follow me. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you permanent lung damage. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh, I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you better be grateful. An unmistakable stain coats this room. Someone has died here. No, people have died in here. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use a dresser. It should be empty. Um, <clears throat> people have died here, haven't they? I sense a heavy spiritual fog hanging over this room. When? This house is almost 150 years old. Obviously, people have died here. Oh. Um, who used to sleep here? Like I said, the house is almost 150 years old. Many people, many, many people have slept here. And now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. Um, uh, okay. I guess I'll start to get settled. Follow me, I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. 
This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip, some dialogue options will open additional conversation paths. Some right away, others down the line. Um... Uh... Um... Where are you going? Huh? Should I say that? Wait, where, where are you going? To work. Somebody has to pay the bills around here. What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every Scarlet who came before me. Except for you, and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. Oh. Um... Can, can I come watch? What? No, the mine is dangerous. I can't babysit you and do my job. Okay, okay. Um... Uh, girl boss. <laughs> Hashtag girl boss. <laughs> it's just hilarious to say it. So, and I'm a city girl. Hashtag girl boss. This is so gross to say, but no, you know what? No. Um... She obviously doesn't like it. Okay. Uh, no. God. No, you know what? Uh, ha uh, uh, uh... Okay, good, good for you, good for you. That sounds pretty impressive and exciting. Good for you. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I don't think of it as boring or exciting in the same way. I, I don't think of cleaning a toilet or painting a wall as either of those things. It's a task. Okay. <laughs> um... That's a healthy mindset. Seems like a good way to look at a job instead of convincing yourself you have to be doing the thing you love the most. It's just okay to just have a job. Yeah, exactly. Would I rather be doing something else with my life? Maybe, but I know I had to take over the company. So why think about the other stuff I could be doing? Um... Are you sure you're okay? You seem kind of upset. I'm fine. I just need to get back to work. Okay, I will... Uh, I won't... I won't keep you. Okay, there. Wait. Alright, I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. We'll see. There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now, it's just you. And the sprawling, decrepit estate. Ooh... Uh, settle... Yeah, we'll settle in the room first. Now that your cousin is gone, the aches and pains of your journey sink into your bones. You stumble back up the stairs to your room, suitcase in tow, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance of your room. Um... Put your spare clothes in the dresser? Oh god. You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. An opossum lurks within. It's quiet, but angry. Afraid! Uh. Oh. I friend. I know hurt. No. Oh, what's your name, little guy? I'm Amari. Dustin. God damn it, you're so cute. I hate possums. Um... What are you doing in my drawers? Warm. Dark. Okay, um... I don't want to fashion my clothes into a nest. Can you tell me about the human who lives here? Which human? Um... Her lane died? Only one human lives here. Because there's now only Tabitha. Dustin no good with names. Two human live here. What? Can you tell me about the humans who live here? 
Okay. Okay, Dustin. Can you tell me about the humans who live here? One human sad, one human scary. The sad human. Can you tell me about the sad human? Cries. Give Dustin bad sleeps. Can you tell me about the scary human? Always watching. Eyes hateful. Okay, that's creepy. Never mind. Never mind. Thanks for your help, Dustin. Okay. Um. Can you move, please? I want to put my clothes in here. No. This Dustin house. You know what? Fine. I'll fashion my clothes into a nest. You poor thing. You look cold in there. You gently lay your clothes on top of the creature, arranging them in the little nest. Dustin closes his mouth somewhat more at ease than before and looks up at you with his shiny black eyes. Human is kind to Dustin. Dustin will remember this. You close the drawer, satisfied with yourself for a job well done. I can't help it. The thing is so stupid cute. Okay, let's, ooh, examine the painting on the wall. This must be an older relative of yours, judging by the dates on the inscription. You've never heard of her. You've barely heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago. So that's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she's actually in the mood for conversation. Mm. Check the closet. Look out the window. Let's look out the window. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you owned this place, you'd totally get out there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. You'd go out and pull weaves, chop trees, carve topiaries, and do whatever you needed to do to return it to its former glory. And once it was all done... You'd sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. Yeah, you definitely do that. Just not right now. Check the closet. Wow, that's creepy. You can see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the drawer instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up in here. Yeah, sure, let's pick up the doll. Yep, let's pick it up. Of course, you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You pick it up to examine it more closely. Its foot reads, Pr Property of Alexandra. No need to carry around this around with you. That's creepy. You close the closet behind you. Alright, that's enough. I Do I really need a nap? I, okay, fine. I mean, we were dozing in the bus, but it doesn't feel restful. What would I do? I kind of want to explore the house, but we should take a nap. Take a nap. You've earned it. You immediately collapse into the bed. You're tired enough that being alone in a strange new place won't stop you from passing out. Or so you thought. You cough as a small cloud of dust rises from the mattress. These sheets might be fresh, but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization. You try to settle in, but the bed is lumpy in strange places, and you can feel the springs pressing through the fabric. You might be tired, but you're far from tired enough to get in more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. All right, that's enough, then. It doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do here right now. Ah, a P, B, and J sounds great right now. You haven't had anything to eat all day. The only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place. A PB&J sounds exactly like what you need to take the rest of the day. You head to the kitchen. You're back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task. Given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls in your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, a plate, and a knife. Let's talk to Frufru again. Approach Frufru. Frufru hisses as you draw near and remains firmly in place. You might want to talk to me, but I don't want to talk to you. Go away. <laughs> Do you like living here? 
I despise small talk. <laughs> Dustin says there's more than one person living in the house. Ugh. You talk to that disgusting little rat who lives in the house is none of your concern. <laughs> Do you know what's in the sealed off part of the estate? Nosy, aren't you? But of course I am not surprised. You seem to enjoy poking your head where it does not belong. If you won't take the hint, I suppose I'll have to take things into my own hands. Oh! Did she slap me? Fufu lunges at your hand and bites you hard. You back away. What an horrid little cat. Okay, let's search the fridge. As you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note taped on the door reading, Janie, stay out, in all caps. Below it, in separate handwriting, are the words, Okie dokie. You open the fridge. Oh god, this looks... This looks dodgy. You already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. Oh, God. Examine the old takeout. Oh! Why did you do that? What were you expecting? This takeout container is disgusting beyond words. A liquefied mess wholly congealed in its styrofoam shell. You can't even tell what it used to be. This substance doesn't just smell bad, it smells ancient. Oh, for God's sakes, put it back. Your body reacts before you even register what you're doing, compelled by a deep, primal disgust. You shove the container back in the fridge, pushing it into the depths of the shelves, and you keep out your mi and out of your mind. Hopefully you can forget it exists and move on with your life. Let's check the mayonnaise. You know you probably shouldn't, but a part of you has to know how old that mayonnaise is. Oh god. You pick up the jar. It's flaking in your hand. It's label flaking in your hand. It expired ten years ago. This jar of mayonnaise is old enough to graduate the fifth grade. Best to put it back and forget you saw it. Alright, let's take the jelly. Lucy's jelly. You reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. All you need now is a plate, a knife, bread, and some peanut butter. Better close this fridge and keep looking. I am not... Okay, let's just look at the ice cream. Tabitha explicitly told me not to do this. You think to yourself as you reach for a pint of banana chocolate chunk. Alright, we will put it back. You stare longingly at the pint of ice cream for a few moments before your self-restraint kicks in and you put it back where you found it. Tabitha already seems to not like you. It's probably best not to fan the flames of her hatred. Close the fridge. You return to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. Search the pantry. Tabitha sure loves her mac and cheese. <laughs> ah, take the bread. You pick up one of the non-moldy no loaves of bread. Great. One step closer to a satisfying snack. All you need now is a plate, a knife, and some peanut butter. Take the peanut butter. Gif. <laughs> Fight me. Gif, jif, gif. The king of nutter butters, and only 3% of each jar is mashed up cockroaches. The only thing you need now are a plate and a knife. I want to examine the mac and cheese. You pick up a box of Tabitha's mac and cheese. You can't say you've ever seen the brand before. Um, put, put it back. Staying away from the mac and cheese was one of your cousin's hard rules, and she already seems to not like you. You put the box back where you found it, reluctant to make things worse than they already are. Close the pantry. 
You close the pantry door as best as you can and turn back to the rest of the kitchen. Search the cabinets. This cabinet must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware and, oddly enough, the utensils. Grab a plate and a butter knife. Okay, there. This is the last ingredient you need to make PB&J. Time to get to work. Let's examine the mug. Ooh, it reads, I was blown away at blowing rock NC North Carolina? Is that NC? So your aunt and cousin actually traveled sometimes, even if it was only a few hours from the estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through the Blowing Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. Uh, examine the shot glass. It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Perlaine, so this is, wasn't from her 50th. From the few stories you've heard from your mom, Perlaine wasn't the type to have kitschy friends who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. I don't... Do I need a bowl? I don't need a bowl. Close the cabinet. You close the cabinet and look back at the rest of the kitchen. I want to check out the garden. Make that PB&J. Despite the state of the horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations, you can feed yourself. A job well done. Sparkles. <laughs> All of that hassle and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Let's explore the garden. Check out the garden. This, garland, uh, this garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. It might not be very safe, but who's to stop you from venturing deeper? Explore the garden. You wander further into the garden. It's quiet out here. Oh, there's a swing, a shed, this is the house, that looks like, what is this? Is this an entrance or is this like a sanitary? Return to the kitchen. You head back inside and close the door behind you. Uh, you're done here. Congratulations, you've eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? Um, I don't know if I want to investigate the forbidden wings of the estate because I don't want Tabitha to hate me, so we might as well head to town first. There's not much left for you to do here other than head out and explore the town. You do just that. I find it weird. Like, I, I'm trying to play it as if, like, my mystical speak with animal self... Am I just going to poke around in my cousin's home right after she said, don't go there? I'm not going to just go there, unless I have reason to. If you had known you'd wind up having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension, though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. And again, maybe it's the perfect time. Continue down the path. It's really pretty out here. Continue down the path. Finally, you made it back to town. The hauler, as the guy in the bus called it, has probably seen better days. It still has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. <gasps> a dog! Gretchen, come back, quit bothering the strangers. Why, I do declare, damn it, I can't do this. Who is the stranger? And why does this... she smell of peanut butter? Sorry about that. Gretchen can be very slippery. Wait, was that Gretchen talking? When she wants to be, she loves to get loose and cause havoc. Um, 
Talk to animals. It's nice to meet you, great Gretchen. <laughs> They're so cute. Oh my, I can't remember the last time I met a newcomer who was so wonderfully polite. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mari. <laughs> That's funny. A funny way to introduce yourself. I'm Stella. It's not often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folk. But you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet Funeral? Uh... Yep. I just got into town today. Wow, I didn't think there would be anyone else coming. Are you staying with Tabby? How's she holding up? Upon mention of your cousin, Gretchen mutters under her breath. One of these days I'll get that Tabitha to pet me. I haven't seen her since Perlane passed. For a while before that, now that I think about it. I'm sorry, did you say Tabby? Uh, did I hear you right? I can't imagine Tabitha ever going by something so... bubbly. She did back when I knew her better. It's been a while. I hope she's okay. Ooh, mystical. She's in conflict with herself. Whoever I met today isn't the real Tabitha- What? I hope you mean that metaphorically. To tell you the truth, she's always been a little rough around the edges. But most people don't really catch on to that. It's, it'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even if she doesn't think so herself. How long have you known her? Oh, quite a long time. The town's really small, so everyone knows everyone. Everybody else as far back as they can remember. Tabby and I got a little close when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer's Night's Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her, up, soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated, and that was that. I haven't seen that girl or her horrible little cat since I was middle-aged. Oh, Gretchen is so cute. Oh, before it slips my mind, if you're staying up in that spooky old mansion, you must have met the Fru-Fru. How does that monster fare? Um... Uh... Um... Uh, Tabitha's cat? Unfortu unfortunately, we've met. Ah, uh, she's so condescending. Wait, what? Are you messing with me? You can't actually talk to my dog, right? Ah... Uh. Alas, you have discovered my dark and terrible secret. Uh. I can talk to animals and animals can talk to me. Your dog sounds like a southern belle when she talks. Haha. <laughs> yeah, of course you're joking. Yeah, see, I knew she'd think I was joking anyways. You and Stella ma maintain silent, awkward eye contact. Well, next time you see that devil, please send my regards. And do let her know that not only do I still draw breath, but that I very much still plan to outlive her. And if you just go to town, got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee, and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat. Sure, let's go. Follow her. Oh, this is where all the people are. The pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with the comforting din of human life all of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. <laughs> Just, you also stand there and silently stare back at them. You silently stare at the patrons, unsure of what to say, or perhaps unwilling to break the silence. Hey, this is Tabitha's cousin. She just got into town for the funeral. I'm showing her around. Stella moves to the nearest booth and you quickly follow. There's no need to be nervous, you know? They won't bite. Hey, Stella. I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. They gracefully placed a coffee, uh, a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Ah, shucks. Thanks, Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. For me? For me? 
Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Tip, you can hit the H button on your keyboard to hide the text box at any time. Okay. Anything for you? Uh. Uh. I'll order a biscuit and coffee. Why not? Could I have a biscuit and coffee, please? I heard they're they were really good. Best in the county. Avery pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and, uh, I'm, uh, sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, you're gone. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyways, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyways. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral too, so it'll be a special occasion. Um, uh, is the potluck like a church thing? Would it be weird for me to come if I'm not a member? No, no, the Sunday thing is coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Um, not too many people go to church around here, if I'm being honest. Uh... <laughs> A non-religious community in the rural south. That's gotta be unusual. I know, I know. We must seem like such heathens. But there are plenty of God-fearing folk in town. They just aren't the biggest fans of the local church. Well, the building's okay, but the pastor's another story. There's just something a little off about the guy. You'll get what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyway, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day-to-day, -day, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? <laughs> Uh, I'll probably just do what I can to support Tab Tabitha through this. I kind of assumed I'd be spending my time trying to help Tabitha, but with how quickly she ran off today, I'm not sure that's enough for a full schedule. That's really sweet of you, but you're right. That'll definitely still leave you with plenty of time to kill. Have you thought about exploring the local trails at all? I'm usually out there a few nights a week for my job, and I'd be happy to show you around. Before Stella can finish, Avery returns, biscuit in tow. Is there nothing else coming for me? Gosh, if I had known that plate of bacon would be my main and only course, I would have waited before digging in. Here's your biscuit. Winnie says it's on the house. She sends her condolences. Ah, uh, thanks, it looks great. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. You don't even need to taste it to know that it is good. Divinity given buttery form. You take a bite. It melts in your mouth as if it was nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. Ah. Whoa, <laughs> this is a really good biscuit. Wow. I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So has Stella mentioned she's famous? <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. Oh, if you're not going to go around, sorry. Stella sighs. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. <gasps> what kind of videos do you do? Ah, uh, she hunts cryptids. Really? That's cool. You should really check out her channel, Amari. It's amazing. Sure. <laughs> Wait, how, how do you know my name? Oh, sorry. It's just that most people in town know about you. Sorry, I'm not sure... I'm, I'm sure that must be creepy. 
Ah, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. The holler's a small place. Everyone knows everyone, and that includes extended family. Oh. Oh, it, it, it's all good. I was just caught a little off guard. Phew, glad that didn't freak you out too much. Yeah, and don't worry about nothing. Perlene said about you... Oh, nothing Perlene said about you will stick, that's for sure. You can just make a good first impression and wipe the slate clean with the whole town. Oh, God. What was she saying about me? Oh, jeez, look. I I'm sorry I said anything. Hey, don't worry about it. Perlane was a gossip and would do this sort of thing with everyone. Spreading weird little rumors about folks was kind of her trademark. Anyway, weren't we in the middle talking about Stella's illustrious YouTube career? Sigh. I guess we were, weren't we? I think the best video to start with would be the river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Cataubra River Runner. I didn't expect much out of the footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. So the River Runner is a cryptid that only, that's only known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Catawba River. And that's all I have to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella pulls up her phone and shows you a clip of something in a river. Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. I also had people saying it was a dog, or even a capybara, that must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. It was... It was... Oh. <laughs> it was a mountain lion. I could smell its stink from miles away. <laughs> I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm the only one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. Uh... <laughs> Gretchen thinks it's a mountain lion. <laughs> you, you decide to share Gretchen's insight with Stella and Avery. <laughs> She's not gonna like this. Haha, <laughs> very funny. It might have gotten me earlier, but I'm on to you. You're not going to trick me into thinking you can talk to my dog. As for your theory... No, no way. It's absolutely not a mountain lion. There are no mountain lions this far east. I did a whole video on the Appalachian mountain lion myth and found Jack Squat. There's no reason one would be swimming in a river like this. They're not fans of water. And the body's too long. No way. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of a sewer gator type situation. Ha! Ah, exactly. Some exotic pet owners set it free and now it'll forever roam the Catawba confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. So, speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if maybe you'd want to come along? It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm just gonna go after the... Wait, no spoilers. Oops, sorry Avery. It's okay, I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See you all around. Now that the coast is clear, I'm going after Skunk Ape. What's Skunk Ape? It's like Bigfoot, but smellier. Most Skunk Ape sightings are from Florida, but while I was doing his research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck playing tug of war with her dog. And I was a and as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. So what do you say? Wanna tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate against a darkening sky, that sort of thing. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Gretchen. Are you gonna be there, Gretchen? Oh, naturally. I wouldn't want any misfortune to befall my beloved Stella. I must stay by her side through thick and thin, however odd her passion may be. 
Of course, it's actually been a while since I've had anyone but Gretchen out there with me. Say no more, I'm in. This is gonna be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in middle school, but it'll kind of be a little blast from, so it'll kind of be like a little blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese running around the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible, but we had a lot of fun and that's all that mattered to us. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come with us. Get the old gang back together. Though I guess Kanika was, has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hidey hole if he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Stella puts, pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? Feels like it's been forever. Oh man, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by or? Okay, if you're really sure, but if you change your mind. Oh, I was just calling to ask if you want to come out to the woods tonight. Uh, I met someone, somebody cool in town today. Uh, she's Tabitha's cousin. I know, yeah, just here for the week. Anyway, we're gonna going out to look for skunk ape. We could take the easier trails if that would help. Dang, man. That sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring her. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Reese, there's always been something off about that boy. I never did like the smell of him. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Uh. <laughs> uh. Is he okay? He's not feeling well, that's all. He had a lot going on in the past. Gosh, ten years or so? But I feel like it's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh well, it's not my place to talk about it, really. I just got a little excited thinking about having him along. Again. He's hilarious. You'd love him. We should swing by his place sometime this week. Uh, that'd be nice. I'd love to meet your friends. Awesome, I'll make it happen. He's definitely the trickier one to meet. Kanika is much easier to track down since she's at the general store basically every day. But friendships can wait, we've got a skunk ape to hunt. So we should probably head out if we want to make it up the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. You pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. After all, it seems everyone in town has heard awful things from you, from your now-deceased aunt. Uh... Let's not be, like, showy. Let's just leave, leave a tip. You reach into your pocket and pull out a single crumpled dollar bill and a quarter. As long as you don't get sick of peanut butter and jelly, your meals will be free while you're here. Share the wealth while you've got it, you think to yourself. You leave the money on the table and follow Stella out of the diner. It hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow, and you see your situation with renewed clarity. You're in a new place, far from civilization and the people you know, following someone you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. You feel a sense of foreboding. You feel an overwhelming sense of foreboding, which seems only natural considering where you are. Your instinct screams at you to leave, but at the same time, you're curious to see what the night has in store for you. You decide to go with the flow, to keep one putting one foot in front of the other, and to not dwell too much on this strange feeling. Gotta love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record, since last year at least. 
You know how it is these days, each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change, like normalcy is restored, if only for a moment. Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like skunk apes. <laughs> um, let's see. What's the weirdest thing? I hear that. What's the weirdest thing you've seen out here, other than anything cryptid related, of course? Oh gosh, that's a good one. Let me think. Well, there's always the deer I saw stealing baby birds out of a nest and eating them. That was pretty messed up. But I think most people know about these days. I've seen tons of videos of other deer doing it, so I'm not sure if it counts as weird anymore. Oh, Tetanus Lake. That's definitely the weirdest. It's a five foot deep, 30 foot wide pile of old cans and bottles and assorted garbage with grass and trees growing on it, so you could barely tell it was there until you stepped on it. It was practically solid ground with nothing much, how, with how much it had been compressed, but you could still fall through it if you weren't careful. Hence the name. Better be up on your shots if you want to mess around in there. It's all stuff from the 50s too, which is super neat. I salvaged a few bottles that I keep on my dresser as a little souvenir. Um... Do you ever... Oh, this one. Do you ever hunt things that aren't cryptids? You know, like ghosts, demons, werewolves, that sort of thing? Yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck, though. Especially when it came from ghosts. Game came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old, abandoned buildings, hoping I'll stumble across some sort of activity. But nothing ever happened. It was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creaky floorboard. When all said and done, I've just been a lot luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad, and I can't rule out the possibility that there really are true hauntings out there. But if they are, if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any myself. Werewolves, I kind of lump in with cryptids. I'd be shocked if there were actually if there actually were people out there who turned into animals. But werewolf lore lines up pretty well with the great beast genre of cryptid. As for demons, I don't know. I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility that they exist, because if they really are out there, geez, a lot of folk are doomed to an eternity of flames. So let's hope all of that's just bunk, am I right? What about aliens? Don't even get me started. Did you see those UFO videos the government declassified? Aliens are definitely real and they have absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. I adore my darling Stella, but she gets the strangest ideas in her head these days. Ever since her parents went away, she's been more and more foolhardy with these, all these, this critter nonsense. You don't see me hunting aliens out there because we know they're real. Ah, uh, we're not alone out the here, but yeah, we're not alone out here. But everything is cut from the same cloth. Whoa, <laughs> you've got to meet my friend Kanika's mom. You two would get along. Mm. Has has anything bad ever happened in these hikes? You know, just curious. Hmm, let me think. There was the time back in early high school when Reese fell down a cliff. But he was fine. We had some folk from town rig up a pulley to get him out of the ravine and his leg only took a couple of months to heal. All in all, not too bad. Though I guess there was also that time I was out here alone and kind of got stuck in a cave. I was getting great fit footage of what I thought was a family of wampus cats, but I wasn't able to wiggle my way back out. Turns out that the wampus cats were actually skunks, who very much did not appreciate me blocking the entrance to their hidey hole. And instead of running for help, 
Gretchen just sat outside bored to tears. Lassie, she is not. As if I made sure to give those nasty little skunks a piece of my mind. That's what I did. And I kept Stella company, just as she would for me if I decided to hide in a hole for hours. It took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty intense. But a few tomato juice baths later, I was right as rain. So it could have been a lot worse. Oh, and there was a time I accidentally stumbled onto old Duke's property and nearly got my head shot off. But that happens to everybody sooner or later. I'd barely count it. So yeah, these hikes aren't all that dangerous, all things considered. Um... Are you really expecting to find anything? What are the chances we'll actually run into a skunk ape in just one night of filming? That's fair. We are hunting a creature that stayed hidden from humans long enough to gain a mythic reputation. What are the odds of something like that popping out to star on my little YouTube channel? But hey, the chances are never zero, right? Did you hear that? Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. <laughs> oh, Duke, you rascal. <laughs> Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. <laughs> Phew. Sorry for getting spooked, Duke. I thought you were... Some creature of darkness? Nah, girl. Just old Duke. Now, what the hell are you doing? You looking for way out here? Skunk ape? Sorry, I asked. And who is this you got suckered into coming with you? Wait a tick. You aren't. Is that... Yep. I see. Welcome to the holler. My condolences. I'll keep you in my prayers. Now both of y'all head to... On back to town, you hear? It's best you st steer well clear of this area tonight. I'm out dealing with my own critter, and it won't be too appreciative if a couple fools with a camera scare away the more sensitive wildlife. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You see anything like that recently? Wouldn't you like to know? You never could stay in your business, Stella Richmond. Put that damn camera down. Oh, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know I learned from the best. That you did. But I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listen to any of it the way you tromp around the woods at night yelling about chunkabungas or what have you. Something's been getting at my chickens. I lost three this week and can't afford to lose many more than that. I'm so sorry to hear that. But huh, I wonder if Skunk Ape has a taste for chicken. Now, see, this is why I don't come to you about these things. It ain't no Skunk Ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what this is, but I don't... But I know you won't believe me if I tell you. Oh, Duke, you don't think it's... I do, actually. It's those damn mountain lions. They're out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been in these woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course, you wouldn't find any in one night of tracking. And I know for a fact that's what's been getting at my chickens. Couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man. Mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been an actual sighting since the 1990s. And even those were iffy. It's true, those mountain lions out here are sh sure as sin. They'll pee all over the best trees. I can't believe you go out here on your YouTube saying some river monster spotted by a couple of school-age Boy Scouts has been 100% confirmed. Yet Appalachian Cougars are some kind of far-fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. You made me look like a fool. I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes and that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to sick anybody up on you. I just don't think it's plausible. You'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of these woods at dawn. <laughs> and if you two don't want 
A base full of buckshot. I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. As Duke's words leave his mouth, a sinking feeling starts to pull at your stomach, and you glimpse brief flashes of something terrible to come. Whatever it is, the four of you are bound to meet it, and it'll change you forever. Oh. There's something waiting for us deeper in the woods. Yeah, I know. I'm hunting it. <laughs> what if it's not a mountain lion, though? What if it's... Oh, don't you get started again. If your daddy could hear you right now about ghouls and goblins using what he taught you to run around the woods like some kind of paranormal investigator. Do you want that to be his legacy, girl? And besides, you know my boy Bo and me are headed down to the state fair to show off Big Betty this week. We'll be gone days and the chicken coop might as well have a big all-you-can-eat sign on it if I don't nip this in the bud tonight. You know how I feel about my chickens. I couldn't take it off take it if I lost any more of my poor little ladies. And you know I have to put up a video by tomorrow evening. <laughs> As Duke and Stella dig their feet in, in, the feeling from before gains form and clarity. Somebody here is going to die tonight. If I miss an update, I might lose my new sponsor and who knows what that'll mean for my career. One of us is going to die tonight. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna be that weird girl. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Are you trying to threaten me? I don't know. It's just a weird feeling. A weird, bad feeling. Whoa, are you psychic or something? Ah, uh, <laughs> signs point to yes. Whoa. What am I thinking right now? Oh, hush, you ain't psychic. You're just trying to unsettle me, so I'll let you all off in the woods to film your little video. Um, Mari, I think you freaked Duke out enough for one evening. Maybe we should leave the poor man to his wild goose chase. I am not freaked out by your friend's theatrics, but if it gets you out of my hair, sure, I'm greatly disturbed. Now run along home and stay out of trouble. As you and Stella return to the trail, she carefully looks back the way you came. Okay, the coast is clear. There's no way we're letting Duke edge us out that easy. Come on, I know a trail that'll let us get around him. Ah. Uh, oh, oh, oh no, we aren't actually heading back to town? But what about Duke? I, I don't know how comfortable I'll be tromping around the woods knowing there's someone with a shotgun out de there. Ready to blow my head off. While I understand your fears, Amari, there's an opportunity for a once-in-a-lifetime adventure. Seize it while you can. Oh, you don't have to worry about old Duke. I've been out tracking with him before. The man sounds like a truck crashing through the trees when he walks. Even if we do cross paths, we'll hear him long before he catches wind of us. There's no shaking you, is there? You'll just... Follow me until I finally relent and go monster hunting with you. I promise it'll be fun and safe. The trail's just up this way. Let's go. Alright, this looks like a good shot. Mind holding the camera? She hands you the camera and takes position. Ahem. <clears throat> As night falls, my new assistant, the mysterious Amari, and I find ourselves on a high hill in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we'll begin our hunt for the elusive, yet pungent, skunk ape. Though mostly encountered in Florida, this possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted all along the southeastern edge of the United States, including right in this very county. Here's hoping we'll get a glimpse tonight. We'll check back once we're on the trail. Until then, say stir searching, Stellars. And keep digging, Gretches. <laughs> I can take that camera off your hands for now. We'll be able to start tracking scenes once the sun sets all the way. In the meantime, we get to take in all this gorgeous scenery. 
Juke may be gone, but that feeling in your gut still lingers. Something terrible awaits you. Something unavoidable. Though what exactly is wrong in these woods still eludes you. There's something wrong in the air. It feels oppressive, dark. Hmm, you don't happen to mean stinky, do you? Do you think you're smelling the skunk ape? Oh. No, no, something metaphorically oppressive and dark. Dang, I thought we might have stumbled across its trail. Oh well, I wouldn't worry too much if I were you. My gut usually warns me if I'm going to run into trouble, and I feel A-OK. -okay. Your quiet moment with Stella is broken by a loud, percussive snort. What was that? <laughs> no need to panic. It's just the sound deer make when they want to warn the rest of the herd about big, scary predators like us. Let's check it out. As you and Stella hear the footfalls of animals retreating into the woods, she reaches for her flashlight. A single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of light while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. Pain. Rot. Decay. A deer? Let me at him. How dare he infringe upon my dear Estella's personal space. Let me at him. And then it's gone. Jeez, Gretchen, calm down. You're gonna hurt yourself. Oh my, it seems I was consumed by a blind rage. How very unladylike. What must you think of me? She can't, she cannot handle deer. When she gets like this, I usually have to pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her harness when she wants to go after something. You're just too much of a potato. But they don't make harnesses to fit, fit potatoes, do they? Uh, there is something wrong with that deer. Did you see its face? Now that you mention it, there is something a little off. I bet it was an abscess, maybe a tumor. It's not like wild animals can get those taken care of, so they just get bigger and bigger. Poor thing. But there's not much we can do about it. Why do you bring Gretchen with you? Out here, she doesn't seem like the safest choice for a hiking companion. Excuse you! Though, after that outburst came over me, well, I suppose I can see the merit of your concern. I actually find her to be quite the opposite. Sure, she wants to chase stuff, but I usually let her when I'm not on one of my cryptid hunts, so I can't just hold that against her. I'm just happy she's still so feisty even at her age. Pugs aren't exactly known for their good health, but here she is, running around in the woods at 17. Whoa. And I feel like the fresh mountain air and exercise have helped a lot in that regard. You defy the laws of nature, don't you, Gretch? Well, it's never too late to turn back. I don't actually think I'm really cut out for this sort of thing. Those deer genuinely spooked me. I don't know if you want me weighing you down. Don't be so hard on yourself. You just aren't accustomed to the sounds of the forest yet. When you got a your first few nights night hikes everything sounds like some horrible monster that's just waiting for an opportunity to shred you to bits but everything you realize it's mostly deer and raccoons but eventually yeah which probably won't go after you here let's take a quick snack break before we get into the night's activities maybe some food will help settle your nerves you settle down to rest Estella breaks open a bag of assorted snacks Ooh. Oh, I love dried apricots. What are sesame sticks? Take the sesame sticks. That sounds delicious. You grab a handful of sesame sticks. Ah, oh, the one snack I didn't make myself. I was hoping to wow you with my cooking skills, but I guess that'll have to wait for some other time. Nevertheless, a delightfully tasty choice. The chips of the hiking trail. 
Some would say chips are the chips of the hiking trail, but only a fool would bring such a delicate, space-consuming snack in their pack when that space would fit another bottle of water or more snacks. You and Stella settle down on an overlook, snacks in hand as the quiet sounds of evening wildlife wash over you. Gretchen gnaws a stick, distracted for the time being. So tell me, what it's like in Barrington? Do you have a house? An apartment? Do you live with family, roommates, pets? Tell me, what it's like to be a Mari? Oh. <laughs> uh, let's pick one. Okay, let's, like, let's... Uh, let's say I live alone in a dingy studio apartment. There, let's say that. The first one. And it's a mixed bag. Yeah, yeah. At first, it was kind of nice to find the end of a place that was just mine. But now it feels cramped. It's like I'm stuck in a closet alone and no one can let me out because I chose this for myself. And as far as I know, I'm, I'm happy being there. The lights flicker, the toilet is constantly getting backed up because the landlady upstairs keeps flushing her cat's litter. It smells like cigarettes for some reason. It's home to an extremely durable population of roaches. But I guess it's home. I do what I can to spruce up the place. I got a plan. You know how they say living things are supposed to brighten up a room. Well, when you put it like that, I wonder if staying in that old mansion is a step up or a step down for you. Maybe just a step sideways. Have you tried looking for a different place or maybe finding a roommate? There's got to be a better apartment than that in a big city like Barrington. Mm, I've thought about finding roommates. Finding a place with roommates, but I haven't really landed on anything yet. Maybe I'll look into it when I get back. Oh yeah? So, what do you do for a living? Um... Wait, I'm mystical and I talk to... Ar to mystical and I talk to animals. I'm probably on... I should say I'm also a streamer, so that we can... No, 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 no. Okay. Mystical, talks to animals. I sell probably like the Etsy one. I have an Etsy store where I sell assorted arts and crafts. Sometimes I'll do commissions. Sometimes I'll just sort of find something on the street and fix it up with a quirky design. Like giving something a mustache or painting it to look like a bee. Oh, so you're an artist, and you upcycle trash. That's so cool, Amari. Hmm, oh thanks, I really love what I do. Most people I meet tend to raise their eyebrows when I tell them what I do, but you know what? I love it. It might not be much, but it's empowering to feel like I'm taking control of my own destiny. Believe me, I can relate. I don't think I'd give up what I do for anything. A crisp breeze passes over you. What about you? What's your living situation? Gretchen and I live in a little house just outside town. It's actually the house I grew up in, so there's a lot of pleasant memories attached to it, and I'm glad I could keep it in the family. My great-great-grandfather built that house, and he must have done a great job because it's just as sturdy as it's ever been. Do you live with your parents? family home and all that? <laughs> um, no, it's just me. They aren't, uh, with us anymore. Oh, oh geez, I'm so sorry. It's okay, you didn't know. And I've done my morning. You don't have to wash your tongue around me or anything. Life goes on. What were they like? Did you get along? They were amazing. Two of the nicest people you've ever met, and interesting too. My dad was a bit of a regional legend around, among hunters and trappers. He was always out in the woods on the trail of something, and we certainly had some interesting dinners because of him. He had to learn how to fend for himself, you see, since his family didn't have much growing up. So he learned how to hunt and trap, and he got damn good at it. 
He always made sure I had food and that I knew how to get it if I ever found myself too far from a grocery store. I could make us a pretty good salad with what's just in the clearing if I had to, though it wouldn't exactly taste great. As for my mom, she was a saint. She was the local vet, the lady all the farms in the county knew to call if their animals were in need of something. She was smart as a whip and strong to boot. Turns out pulling calves out of a 1600 pound cows all day is a great way to build muscle. But she was gentle too. Even the smallest mouse would get the proper care in her hands. I'm sure she's most of the reason Gretchen here is one of the oldest dogs I've ever met. So yeah, those were my parents. I'm so sorry for your loss. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm just so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I know it's weird, especially since we just met today. Whoa. My stars! What was that? That sound wasn't meant for human ears. Whatever lurks behind the tree line is something best left unseen. But the events of the evening were already set in motion long before you step foot in Scarlet Hollow. There's no turning back now. Stella immediately packs her bags and slings it over her shoulder. There's something terrible out there, Stella. Whatever it is, it's close. Here, hold Gretchen's leash for me and I'll check this out. You and Stella inch towards the tree line as she shines her flashlight in the woods. Do stay close, Amari. I wouldn't want any harm to befall you. As you approach, a series of weak clucks call out from a nearby bush. Pain. It's all pain. Maybe Duke's birds weren't eaten after all. Shit. Oh! <gasps> What the? What the hell was that? Hold on, I gotta play that back. Holy shit! I guess it must be maybe two, three feet tall? Doesn't look hairy either, so I think we can rule out the skunk ape. Whatever it is, it has one of Duke's chickens. It looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. Um. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Wait, do, do we have to? Now's not the time to hesitate. If we're catching this thing, we've got to go now. Oh, I... Stella sprints into the woods. In pursuit, leaving you no choice but to run after her. Gretchen excitedly pulling you along by her leash. Uh-oh. Stella, my darling companion. Are you alright? Ugh. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm alright. I just tripped on something weird. Oh no! That poor thing! It must have been one of Duke's. Oh Jesus! It's still alive! Investigate the chicken. You move towards Stella to get a closer look at the chicken. Don't let Gretchen get too close. She'll try to take a bite out of it if you don't stop her. I would never! Something about this bird doesn't smell right. <laughs> you hold Gretchen's leash close to your chest. She squirms against her harness. Examine the head. Why am I alive? Its poor little chicken eyes look up, up at you, glazed over, but still rolling around in their sockets with unfortunate life. Examine the wing. Looks like this is what Stella tripped on. The wing is barely still attached, but that seems to be the least of the chicken's concerns. Examine the growth. Good god. At first you thought it might be a tumor, but this is something else. The skin is stretched taut, the growth pulsing beneath. Having investigated to your heart's content, you turn away to give Stella room to film. 
Ahem. It seems we found one of Duke's chickens, folks, and she's not looking good. I'm hesitant to speculate, but she definitely seems to have some sort of growth under her skin. Could be a tumor, could be something else. Either way, I don't think there's much that can be done for her at this point. Jeez, I'm gonna have to put up some massive content warning for this video. Hey, do you hear that? There's something out there, all around us. I can smell it. There are so many of them. What in Sam Hall are you doing out here? Didn't I tell you to? Birdie? Oh, Birdie, what's wrong, darling? God, good God. Do y'all see what did this to her? Um, I can hear it. We didn't see whatever did this to your bird, but I think we can hear them right now. Oh, uh, don't tell me you're all caught up in Stella's nonsense. Duke, I'm so sorry. We're on the trail when we found her like this. Put that camera away for God's sakes, girl. I don't want to be in another of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. No one needs to see Birdie like this. You wouldn't put her online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swollen and hurting. Duke, did you hear what Amari said? I think they're coming closer. You stay away from Stella, you mongrels. Come out, you sons of bitches. <laughs> oh my god, that's so creepy. Duke, don't shoot them. We have no idea what'll happen. You hear that, Stella? That ain't the sound of something peace-like. Whatever these things are, they're playing for what they did to my- They're paying for what they did to my girls. Come on, you, whatever your name is, grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. I can feel that wild hot rage from earlier start to wash back over me. I'm going after them. As the creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. Quick, they're closing in on us. God, Gretchen's gonna escape. I can't let this old ass dog go. Oh God, look at the voices. Ah, oh, I can't let anything happen to this cute dog. Die for Gretchen. What the? <gasps> you dive forward and scoop Gretchen in your arms just before she manages to wriggle out of your harness. Her eyes fixate on the dark tree line over Duke's shoulder. Oh God. God damn it. <gasps> you hear a body hit the ground and then quiet as the chaos fades and the sounds of nature creep back in. Gretchen? Mari? Duke? Are you alright? Uh oh, I'm gonna say weird stuff. I warned you to. Something terrible was gonna happen. Woe is me. I'm postmodern Cassandra. Huh? I guess he did. But I, what happened? Did I lose myself again? I apologize for being so easily shaken up. I'll do better. Gretchen! Here, I'll take her. My poor little pup. Thanks for watching out for her. Du Duke? Are you okay? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Duke. Holy shit. What do we do now? What the hell are we supposed to do? Oh, we've got to go to the police. What do you mean, what do we do? We've got to go to the police. A man's dead. What happened to Duke? Is something wrong with him? Why won't he get up? You're right. You're right. And we have footage of what happened here. But it's so dark and shaky. It all just seems so unbelievable. We need more footage. Come on, let's go after them before we lose our chance. What the hell, Stella? No, are you nuts? The man is dead, Stella. I... Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's head back and call the police. My phone should get reception once we're back at the main road. Oh my god. Oh my god. As you and Stella quickly make your way back through the woods, the unearthly whispers of creatures unknown once again surround you. Oh crap, keep moving. You say nothing, continuing forward with a grim determination. 
We're almost there. As you and Stella reach the main road, the whispers fade back into the sounds of nature. It sounds like they've stopped following us. I'm cert I certainly can't smell that stench anymore. I should get reception now that we're back on the main road. Let me find my phone so I can call the sheriff. You feel a buzz in your pocket. Oh shit. Six missed calls from Tabitha. And 13 text messages. Uh... Uh, uh, call her. You try and call Tabitha back, but it goes straight to voicemail. Tabitha, uh, text her? Your message sits unread. Yikes, Tabitha's been blowing up my phone. I guess she must be worried about you. But, uh, first things first, let's call the police. Stella pulls out her phone and dials. Hello? Earl? This is Stella Richmond. I'm up in the mountain on Ans... As... Gina? As... As China? Trail? What? Duke is dead, Earl. Shotgun. It happened right in front of us. There's... There's something in the woods. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think we're okay, but hurry. Jesus, Earl. Who's going to tell Bo? I guess now we wait. It takes a little while, but eventually a patrol car arrives at the scene. Out of it walk two officers, Sheriff Hugby, a friendly older man, and Deputy Franklin, a serious man wearing sunglasses, despite it being the middle of the night. See? Right there. A thing jumps out of the woods, then the shotgun goes off. What in the Sam Hill? What is that? Some kind of Pillsbury Doughboy? Could have been a naked maniac. No, no, no. There was more than one. They chased us through the woods. Whatever they are, they aren't human. And they killed Duke. Uh-huh. Now we're gonna have to confiscate this camera, Miss Richmond. If you don't mind, this is evidence. But I... Uh, okay. Let me just turn it off to save the battery. Here you go, Deputy Franklin. We appreciate your compliance with the law. We'll get our team out in the morning to retrieve the body, but for now, Sheriff Hugby and I... Please call me Earl. Earl and I will escort you and... Who are you exactly? That's Amari. She came into town for the funeral. Amari is in... Uh... Tabitha's cousin, yeah. Damn, didn't think you'd actually show. We'll escort you both back into town. If there's a naked maniac on the loose, it's best you don't walk back on your own. It wasn't a... Never mind. Why aren't you going out there tonight? There's a dead body in the woods. Those things out there could attack someone else. Well, it ain't likely... It ain't... It ain't exactly like old Duke's going anywhere at this point. He'll still be out there in the... In the morning. We only have a skeleton crew at the moment. Monday nights are Deputy Derrickson's bowling nights. We'll be on alert for any more reports of naked maniacs, but retrieving Duke, Duke will just have to wait. Now, if you'll kindly step into the vehicle, we can return you safely to your home. Do we have to ride back with you? We can just walk. Those creatures left. We'll be fine. I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist for your own safety. Stella sighs. Okay. Thank you. You can ride up front with me, little lady. That is, if your mama permits. But what about Stella? She hates being in those wheeled contraptions. Sure, Earl. You can hold Gretchen on your way back to town. The cops usher you and Stella into the back of their squad car. You are just the... Cutest little thing, Miss Gretchen. Yes, you are. Sheriff Hugby packs Gretchen on the head affectionately, but she remains wholly focused on Stella. A worried look stretches across her little pug face as Hugby scratches behind her ears. Stella stares out the window, oddly quiet. Oh, my poor Stella. Neither of much, us much likes these awful metal beasts. If only I was able to comfort her. Confound this old man who reeks of coffee just keeping us apart. 
Hey, Stella, you good? She doesn't respond. Place a comforting hand on her shoulder. And you just... You reach out and rest your palm gently on her shoulder. She jumps slightly at your touch, but you can feel some of her tension ease and hear her, her let out a self-soothing sigh. Um, I don't think Stella's okay back here, fellas. I'm sure it's just a little car sickness. She'll be alright as rain once we get back to the hill, though she best not try to hurl in the meantime. We wouldn't want Franklin here to have to work late cleaning the squad car. We're only a few minutes away now. Y'all better keep it together until then. Soon the rubble of gravel beneath the tires gives way to uneven pavement, and the car comes to a stop in front of a small cottage. You two stay out of trouble. We'll have this all sorted out in the morning. Just get a good night's sleep. And you, whatever your name was... Amari. Uh, sure. You're in town for the funeral? Good. Don't you go leaving before then. I imagine we'll need to ask you a few questions about everything you've seen tonight. Stella, keep an eye on her for us. Make sure she doesn't get into any more trouble. Y'all have a good night now. Bye bye, Gritchy, and y'all have a good evening. If any bugaboos give you trouble, you know how to get in touch. And here you are. Back in town, away from the woods, with no one but Stella in sight. Holy shit! Ah. Uh, I hope you don't mind me asking, but why on earth do you want to walk home? That's a fair question. I've just had some bad experiences with cars. I don't know how to drive them, and I don't like getting in them unless it's literally a question of life or death, which I guess tonight was. Sorry if I weirded you out. God, what a night. Um, they sure seemed a little blasé about a man's death. I can't believe they're waiting until morning to even start looking for him. Who knows what those things are doing to his body right now. I believe that they were well-intentioned, if in over their heads. And what's worse is I think they imply that you're a suspect? Even after we showed them all the footage. Uh, the truth will get out. Even if they don't believe that footage, those things are out there in the woods and something's telling me they're not going away. Yeah, no kidding. But it's okay, I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. Nor will I, though I have little understanding of police work. I was there. I filmed the whole thing. At the very least, it'll never hold up in court. And it won't get to that point either, because we're going to do a little investigating of our own. We've got to find out more about those things. If we can get clearer footage, or better yet, trap one of them, there's no way they can blame you for what happened. The library doesn't open for a while, but I've read every book on cryptids they had and never came across anything like this. Hmm. There is someone in town who might have some useful informa information. My friend's mom. Her place isn't far. We should head over now before it gets any later. Um. I should. Uh. I should check in on Tabitha. My friend's place is on the way back, and stopping by shouldn't take long. You sure you don't want to stop in first? I know I wouldn't want to be. I, I know I wouldn't want to head up that mountain road by myself after everything that's happened tonight. Oh, fine. Let's do this. Awesome. Let's go. I'm glad you're sticking it out with us. It's always nice to have an extra companion. I hope she's still awake. There's something foul creeping up behind us. Oh, uh, wait. There's something foul creeping up behind us. Amari? Jesus! What the hell is this? You and Stella turn to see a shadowy figure staring at you from across the road. You didn't hear it approach. Welcome home. You're finally back where you belong. Before you can respond, the door behind you swings open. An older woman stands in the entryway. 
Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. You look back and the figure is already gone. Oh no, it's about to rain. Great. <laughs> the thunder came in right the good timing. Disappeared into the shadows of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped. What brings you out here so late? And who is this? Hi, Mrs. Forsyth. This is Amari. Is it okay if we come in? You and Mrs. Forsyth briefly lock eyes. She's impenetrable and you feel small and almost naked in her presence. There's something about her that's far beyond you, but you feel no threat, no malice. And then the moment passes and you see only the woman before you. Of course, of course. You're in luck. I just put water for hibiscus tea. And for goodness sake, you can call me Sibo. You're an adult now, after all. Welcome to my little nook. This place always has the loveliest aromas. Oh, wrong voice. <laughs> It's nice to finally meet you, Amari. I was so sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul, and she's been sorely missed on the holler, and now poor Perlaine is gone as well. Do let me know if there's anything you need while you're in town. Oh, who was that outside? Just a very sick man. You need... you don't need to worry about him. That... you don't need to be worried about him. You knew my mom? Of course, dear. She was a good friend of mine for many years. She was such a lovely woman. You should come by sometime. I can delight you with unsavory tales of her youth. And how did you know she died? Oh, Perlaine was a chatty woman. Not much went on that I wouldn't get an earful of, bless her heart. I never met Perlaine. You don't have to pass on your condolences to me. I have no feelings about the woman. Ah, that's fair, child. But it seems like the right thing to do. We need your help. Ah, yes. I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What's got you here so late? You seem troubled. You know about weird stuff, right? Unexplained, uh, unexplainable stuff? I'm not sure I follow, dear. I know which oils to use for which aches. I know a bit about classic spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable things are you talking about? Duke was killed tonight by something in the woods. Oh, my lord. Have you contacted the police? Yes, and they didn't take it very seriously. They're not even looking for the body until tomorrow. Those things are out there. I don't even know how to describe them. Hmm. I can't say I know much about the local wildlife. My daughter has always had a brighter gift for nature than I. This wasn't the local wildlife, Miss Forsyth. Scythe? Miss Forsyth? Here, I can show you. Stella pulls out a memory card from her sleeve and pops it into her phone. I wasn't about to just let the police hold on to this, at least not before we had a chance to make a copy. Oh... The cops are gonna be mad when they find out you kept that. Only if they figure out I kept it on purpose. Don't worry, I can play dumb when I have to. As far as they'll know, it was an honest accident. What was that? Up in the mountains, to the northwest. Within... Within the town limits? Yes. I see. Is there a way to make the video bigger and louder, if you can? I'd need to plug the memory card into a computer. I could go back and get mine. No need. Kanika should be awake. She can lend us hers. Kanika? Are we seeing Kanika? You better come with, Stella. I'm sure she'll be more willing to help a friend than her nosy mother. Kanika? Come out now, we could use a little help. What, Mom? Oh, hey, Stella. 
and Gretchen, who's a good potato. Kanika, is it me? Am I a good potato? I must ho certainly hope I am. And a stranger. What are you doing in my house? Uh, I was helping Stella with a video and something terrible happened. Tabitha's cousin? Yep. Sweetie, we were wondering if we could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend have a video to show us. It's really important, Kanika. God, these voices are confusing me. Okay. My room's a mess. I'll just bring it out here. I don't have a voice for her. It's it's too many characters. Hmm. Heads up, Kanika. This is graphic. You got killed out in the woods tonight. It's on the recording. Wait, are you serious? Duke's dead? We can watch this without you. You know I have a harder stomach than any of our friends. I'm pressing play. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? This is far beyond my ability to contribute. I'll leave the thinking to you, you humans. I'm so sorry either of you have to see this, but Mari and I have no idea how to make heads or tails of it. Stella, are you okay? Did you get hurt? I'm fine, really. I'm okay. I'm fine too. Thanks for asking. The other three look at you, unsure of what to say. Poor Duke. Poor Bo. Has anyone told him yet? We talked to the police. I hope they told Bo, but Earl and Deputy Franklin didn't seem too much in a to be in much of a hurry to do anything. I'll call him later tonight. But for now, we have something far more serious to discuss. Whatever happened in the woods, we weren't supposed to see any of that. You're not wrong. These things my grandmother called them ditchlings. They are a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Mom, come on, whatever is doing this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Amari with this tail tally tally po crap. A man just died. Have some respect. Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk. The creatures themselves are harmless to people, despite that grisly scene in the woods. How can you say that? Duke is dead. An unfortunate accident and nothing more. Just as birds flock before the storm, the ditchlings congregate where tragedy is soon to fall. To see one is to be cursed by fate. Jesus, Mom, you clearly had a rough night. They don't need this. It's okay, Kanika. This is helpful. Stella, whatever these things are, they aren't magical. We can't rule that out, not after what we saw. But fine, let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to these animals. You saw that chicken in our video. What was that growth? Uh... Animals and mystical. Ooh, let's do both. I have to agree with Sybil. I could clearly hear them telling us that this place is cursed and to get out while we still can. Spooky stuff. Wait, are you serious? I couldn't make out anything. It was just... It was all just garbled whispering to me. How interesting. Are you sure you're not just subconsciously writing your memories to match my mom's theories? And even if we were to assume for a moment that you and my mom are right, I'd still want to know what they're doing in the woods. Maybe what we're seeing here is some sort of parasitic, larval stage, part of their life cycle. I don't want to jump to any conclusions about something like this out there, not without doing some research or take, talking to a biologist. I'm sure there's a rational explanation that'll clear all of this up. Oh dear, I've completely for, in, I've forgotten entirely about the tea. I'll put it on. Let me fix you up a couple of cups, it'll help soothe your nerves. I don't know, it's getting late and I should have learned- Oh! Crap. <laughs> Sam, these voices are confusing you, it's too many people. 
I don't know, it's getting late and I should let Amari get some rest. I ran a ragged today with all the hiking and running through the woods in terror. Um... Uh... I'll find out about this tomorrow. I should get back to Tabitha, I'm kinda worried. Maybe she fell asleep? I don't know. Uh... I just wanna go home. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't eager to get home and start doing some research. I'll ask around my usual forums to see if anyone has information on ditchlings, is that what they call you called them? That's right. You go home now and do try to get some rest. Don't stay up all night on the on the online. <laughs> Let me get you some of my house made pe peppermint tea to go. It really does wonders to soothe the soul. Bye, Sala. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? And call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kanika. I'll see ya. Bye, Amari. It's excellent iced or warm, though with the nights getting chillier, warm will probably be best. Helps wake up the bones. Be careful out there, both of you. Sybil turns and closes the door behind her. What an unfortunately short visit. Alrighty, let's head back home. My home, I mean. Wait, but what about my home? And here we are. You're welcome to stay the night if you want. Uh, I should probably head back and check on Tabitha. That's sweet of you. Are you sure you're okay heading back up the mountain alone? Uh... Sybil said those things were harmless. Uh, sibling, Sybil's sibling. Sybil said that ditchlings are harmless. I think I'll be okay. It's not far. Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you're there, okay? And good luck. You and Stella exchange numbers. I'll see you tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we're in this together. Yeah, we are. Stay safe, buddy. Good luck, Amari. I have a bad feeling about walking home by myself, but you know what? You begin the long hike back up the Scarlet's estate alone. Continue down the path. Almost home. Continue down the path. You've made it. Your salvation in sight, you make a mad dash to the door. Try the door. As you reach for the door... Oh, as you reach for the knob, the door swings open. Ooh. Where the hell have you been? Uh... I called you back! As soon as I had reception. Did you? I didn't notice. Um... Do you know anyone named Wayne? I employ over a hundred people. I'm sure I know a Wayne. Um... Uh... Look, I got su suckered into something. It was weird. Uh, I got suckered into something. Sorry to worry you. The Stella girl had me come with her in this night hike to find cryptids. Ah, so you met Stella then. Ugh, that explains everything. She's gotten you all worked up. I'm gonna go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, oh. Wait. <laughs> Can you tuck me in? <laughs> Can you tuck me in? <laughs> Are you serious? Tuck you in? No, go to sleep. You're alone in the estate. The sound of the wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. As you settle into your room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. Call her. You pull out your phone and call. Hey! How are you? She sounds a little different. Like she's been crying. Did you make it back alright? Yeah, how are you? Are you okay? Uh, totally fine. I mean, as fine as I could be, I guess. You don't have to worry about me. Go get some C's, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. From the relative safety of this uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. 
though you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments, for now, you're safe and you're warm. Eventually, the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. Maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky, you'll wake up in the normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's a nice thought, but deep down, you can't help but worry that things will only get worse. Ooh, Scarlet Hollow. Alright, and that wraps up episode one of Scarlet Hollow. We'll be back for the second episode as it's spooky season. Thank you all for watching, and until the next episode, take care everyone.